Hello and welcome to this Android event tutorial brought to you by North Border Software. My name is Gary. Um, this is part two of the Place Picker series uh, in which we're going to uh, enter the Java code and actually test the Place Picker. Uh, in part three, we'll put some geographical bounds uh, around that Place Picker. Um, it's quite a long tutorial, so I'm going to speed up some of the typing. Um, but first of all, I just want to get some objects in um, which will relate to the uh, views in the uh, in the layout. Okay, so we have a, a text view for the place name, a text view for the place address, uh, a web view for the attribution text, and a button for the uh, uh, actually launching the uh, the place picker. Um, so now I'm just going to uh, associate those with the uh, views in the layout uh, using the find view by ID method. Okay, um, so the other thing we need to do is just set up an on-click listener for the um, get place button, and it's the get place button which in which we'll launch the uh, the place picker uh, intent. Okay, so um, the next thing we want to do is actually handle permissions in runtime. Um, because we're compiling against uh, Android NuGar 7.1, uh, we need to um, put some code in there to actually enable the location-based services in runtime. If we're running um, releases prior to Android 6, that's Marshmallow, then um, those runtime permissions are actually granted at the time of the app installation. However, from version 6 onwards, we need to uh, handle those in runtime. Okay, so um, what I want to do is just create um, just a method here, local method. Um, we'll just put it in here. I'm just going to call it request permissions. Just request permission and should just be able to create the uh, method locally. Okay, so um, when we actually prompt a user to um, request permissions or grant permissions, we uh, need to present them with a dialog box. Uh, we do that by calling a particular method. So um, first of all, I'm just going to type that uh, method in. And it's request permissions. Okay, so um, this is the um, dialog box, uh, the method which calls the dialog box up. Um, what we're saying is that um, the permission we're interested in is the uh, find location. And when um, we actually grant or deny that, we, we're going to pass uh, a request code. It's an integer value which we've yet to define. Um, that's why I've got this error here. So what I want to do at the top is just define. It's an arbitrary integer value and um, it will just become apparent as to why uh, we need that integer in, in the next set of code. Um, so first of all, let's just um, define this integer. Okay, so I'm just going to set that equal to 101. It can be any value. Okay, so um, we're still getting an error here because um, we need to call this method when uh, we're running Android M or Marsh Marshmallow or higher. Um, anything prior to that and then the um, permissions were, were granted at the time of installation. So what Android Studio has asked us to do here is just surround this statement with some version code, uh, which we'll do. So now it's only going to execute this um, line here if uh, we're running Android M or higher. Okay, so um, the other thing I need to um, look out for now is to make sure that we only execute this entire block uh, if the permissions have not been granted. So we need to just check um, whether the permissions have been granted or not. If they have, then again, we just want to bypass the um, code and um, and that's what we're going to be doing now with uh, another if statement. Okay, so um, what this line of code is saying that um, what we're going to do is look into the manifest uh, for the permission of the file location 
I'm going to check and if it's not um, permission has not been granted for the um, find location then we're going to execute the code if it has been granted then we're simply just going to bypass this code so uh, this ensures that we only execute this as a one-time action okay so once the um, permission dialog has been uh, presented to the user and response has um, been initiated then um, we need to handle that response and so there's a callback method which is actually um, executed um, and we'll just go and put, populate that callback method now and uh, we'll handle the permissions so if I do a, a control O I'm looking for um, on request I'm looking for on request permission results and that's the uh, callback method we're interested in okay so um, what I'm going to do here is actually just put in um, a switch in case we can use an if then but um, you've got to be in mind that the application may be uh, requesting permissions from multiple permissions so um, we need to handle each one in turn and this same callback method is used each time and this is the purpose of the request code the request code is actually the um, integer which should be defined here um, so what we would normally do is put a unique integer integer value in there for each uh, permission so I'm, I'm just going to populate this with a switch in case uh, even though we've only got one permission it just gives you an idea of the uh, structure we need to put in place to, to handle this So here you see the um, we've switched on the request code and just put a case statement in for the um, the uh, integer value for the final location which is 101. Obviously we'll have uh, multiple case break statements for each individual uh, permission. Okay so here you can see um, I've actually put the switching case in for the um, request code um, the request code being defined as the, uh, the 101 value for the final location. Um, Obviously, for each uh, permission we have, we'll have a, a different value for the request code, and we just have a, multiple uh, case break statements. Um, so, what I need to do now uh, within here is uh, enter some code um, to allow us to um, handle the the appropriate action on the uh, response to the dialog box. Okay, so um, all I'm doing here is saying that uh, we're going to get the uh, result from the uh, dialog box and if it does not equal uh, permission granted, in other words if it's denied, uh, we'll show up a message to say um, this app requires location permission to be granted and then we'll finish the app. Um, the case where permissions are granted then um, we simply just um, move on uh, with the rest of the code and um, those permissions will be uh, enabled on the device so um, the user can actually use the place picker uh, okay so um, what we come to now is actually um, the place picker itself um, now to do this uh, we go in into the um, on click listener and this is what we need to fill in Okay, so the um, first thing we need to do is actually um, create an intent builder for the place picker. Uh, just a well-defined piece of code that we need to do this. So first of all, we just create um, an object of the place picker intent builder. I've just called that builder. Okay, so then just we just need to create an intent. Um, what it's going to do here is um, has to be surround this with a try and a catch which we'll do so uh, if it fails there's some uh, exemption states here which are called upon so the final thing we need to do is actually just launch the actual play picker itself now um, there's a special method we used for doing this and it's called start activity for result I'm just going to put it in the try part and it's start activity for result and we're just going to pass the um, intent there now again like the um, runtime permissions we need to define um, an integer value which um, is going to act like a re um, similar to the request code uh, for when we call the callback method here so I'm just going to call this place picker uh, request
and I'll just define this at the top against okay, so any ar arbitrary value and I've just given that a value of 1 for the moment so um, so what's actually going to happen here um, when we actually call this method um, again we're going to initiate um, a callback method for when we actually look at the place pick and actually select a place itself and it's within that callback method that we then populate the text view so uh, we need to add that callback method now and it's called um, on activity result so I'll just put it in the bottom here do a control O I'm looking for on activity for result so um, the first thing I need to do is actually add some code here to um, ensure that um, the, n the next few lines of code are actually associated with the um, particular instance of the place picker request. Um, you've got to bear in mind the app may call upon multiple place pickers um, and they would all maybe want to um, react in a slightly different way and this is a common callback method which is used by all of those so we need to um, identify um, each individual request very similar to the runtime permissions we need to uh, you know, make sure we handle e each permission in, uh, separately so first of all I'm just going to put an if statement in here to identify the uh, page picker request so if and I'll call it request it's request code which is one of the parameters place picker request I'll put some brackets in there and the next thing I need to do is make sure that we've got a, a valid result so um, the other parameter that's passed back is uh, a result code um, I'm looking for result OK so it would be if results code equals results OK so that's what we're looking for and again I'll just put open brackets in there so um, that's essentially our little framework completed looking for the specific um, place picker request and we're looking to see if the results okay um, so now really um, I need to populate the the text views um, and the um, the attribution web view as well um, so what I need, need to do first of all is actually create a, an object of the place class um, so I'm just going to call the place class I'm just going to call this place And it'd be a place picker dot get place and the context would be main activity and we we'll just put data in there. That'd be main activity dot this. Okay. So um that's essentially um our data loaded into the uh, object of the place class um, so what we need to do now is just call them specific aspects of that place data okay so uh, let's start populating the um, text views so you can see here I've done the first two um, quite simply need to uh, use this uh, place get name and place get text it's very straightforward and just populate the uh, um, the, 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 the text views. Um, what I'm going to do now is um, fill out the web view uh, for the attribution data. Um, just a word of warning, uh, a lot of the attributions actually have no data involved at all so uh, I just want to check to see if there's actually any attribution data in, in the uh, return string. So I'm just going to put another if statement in here. okay so um, we don't normally set text in web views uh, we need to pass the uh, the HTML so uh, we, we tend to load the data and just give some instruction about the um, the, uh, the the char set that's actually used I'll just correct that one okay right um, so if there is some uh, attribution data in there we just put it, need to put an else
Okay, so um, the attribution data is a is a char sequence, so we just need to convert that to a string uh, and just pass it as HTML in the same way as we've done here um, before. Okay, um, so really, um, we're in a position now to actually test the uh, app. Um, I'm going to run this on the emulator. I'm going to use an emulator running uh, Android 6 um, because um, my the SDK is so new that it's not going to run on emulators running version 7 at the moment. So um, let's load the app and see how we get on. Uh, so this is the uh, Place Picker app. Let's just load it up. Uh, first of all, I'm going to deny the permissions. And you can see it's come up with a toast uh, mentioning that the permissions need to be granted. Okay, what I'm going to do now is just allow the permissions and I'm just going to hit the Get Place button. I'll um, just wait for the uh, location to actually load. Okay, so uh, you can see they're just starting to load now. Um, you can pan the uh, map around. I can see you've got a list of uh, locations here. So let's just pick a uh, location. Let's select this one. I can see it's uh, loaded the information, the name and the address into the uh, text views and there's no attribution data. Um, let's just get another place. Let's just test the search button here. Look for, uh, uh, we'll go for York there. Um, just select that. Um, so. You can get a sense that the uh, place picker is working. I'll let you guys play with it. Uh, in part three, we'll look at uh, how to impose some geographical bounds on the uh, place picker itself. So, catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Remember to like, share, and subscribe if you found this tutorial set useful. And all the source code and project files are available for download from my website. Thank you.